field to come around and see how many, if anybody, will choose to make a pit stop. What do you think, guys? I think we'll see some make pit stops this time because they're only about seven or eight uh, laps away from making pit stops for fuel. Here's Rob Moroso's car, the Crown Oldsmobile. Rob coming out of the car now. Boy, Benny, he got way off the track there. How in the world did he get up there? Rob Moroso. A huge disappointment as a NASCAR Cup Series driver and as a human being, but we'll get to the second part later. It's very common in today's NASCAR to see 20 year olds get Cup Series rides, but at the time in 1990 this was extremely rare. Moroso was being hyped up as being the next big thing in NASCAR, and for good reason. With the help of his team owner slash father Dick Moroso, Rob Moroso would find immediate success in the Bush Series in the late 80s. He would go on to win Rookie of the Year in 1987 with a 15th place points finish and would have his breakout season in 1988 winning 4 races and finishing 2nd in the standings. Rob Moroso would make history in 1989. He would go on to win the NASCAR Busch Series Championship at just the age of 20. This made him the youngest champion in NASCAR's history. He would post 4 wins, 12 top 5s, 16 top 10s, an impressive 7 poles and an average finish of 10.4. After his championship season, Dick Moroso decided it was time for his son to move up to the Winston Cup Series full-time in 1990. Crown Oil would sign up as a full-time sponsor for Rob Moroso's 1990 rookie season. So heading into the 1990 season, the expectations were extremely high on Rob Moroso for his rookie season. I'm going to use one word to describe Rob Moroso's rookie season. Disastrous. The combination of a new driver and a new team moving up from the NASCAR Bush Series did not boast well for either one of them. Boom. At the Daytona International Speedway, we've just had a major incident down here in turn one involving four cars. It looked like Phil Parsons number four got loose. The Mike Alexander number 12 has been collected. So has Alan Kowicki's car number seven been involved and Robbie Moroso, the rookie's number 20. That's his second car this week. He had one wiped out in turn two when a car was losing oil in front of him to practice the other day. Well, here we can see the car number four of Phil Parsons already sideways. Alan Kowicki down on the inside and Rob Moroso right in the middle. And Mike Alexander, the car coming up behind there, the red car number 12 as they spin out into the grass. A lot of damage water. done to the three cars on the left, the 20 car, the 12 car, and the four car. Now, Alan Kowicki doesn't seem to have too much damage to the car number seven on the right. In fact, he gets uh, away. He, he involved his car is off the racetrack on the inside he's backed in the fence with the left rear of the car we see the left rear banged up damaged pretty heavily I don't know if he's gonna be able to get the car to roll with the thing banged up as much as it is we'll see if Davy Allison wasn't involved he was very close I think maybe he escaped but uh, really had to take some evasive action well I say he touched we'll see who's yeah. right Okay, you can see Rob trying to get the car going and it just won't move on him. The back tires are spinning and here is a replay of it. There's Davey Allison and Bobby Hillen, the cars we were focusing on and we see the smoke where... Yes. Uh -huh. David does touch it, but he does a great job of just turning left and coming down and he going home without too much damage. The 25 of Schrader, the 17 of Waltrip and the 5 of Ricky Rudd and a spin over in turn number 2 couple of cars involved including Rick Mastin number two and the number 20 car of rookie contender Rob Moroso but all cars are still moving a lot of smoke coming from the Rob Moroso car so obviously some sheet metal rubbing against the tire and that car may have some serious mechanical problems he will be coming in well he's following Richard Petty into the turn and you can see a couple of cars up in front sort of getting together there's Rob Moroso. Richard Petty comes down on the inside and taps Moroso. Petty's car almost goes up over the front end of Rob Moroso's car, almost on the side. And Harry did a fine job diving to the inside to avoid that. Let's look at it in real time now. Now they're entering turn number one. Moroso goes out a little bit. And Richard Petty hits him just a little bit to get him sideways and see the result. And there is Rob Moroso, and Jerry Punch is right there. He's still sitting in the car, as you see, Bob. And Rob, uh, how bad's the car hurt? Well, I think we just maybe bent some front suspension, and the oil cooler has the bottom of it, so it's going to take us a couple laps to get it back together. Well, they're working on the car. Now, the oil cooler is the reason you're seeing so much speedy drive on the racetrack. The crew now working under the front of the car. That oil cooler 
carries 14 quarts of oil and it's empty. It has been ruptured. The line has been torn. They'll try to replace that while they're cleaning up the track and try to get him back in action. Rob? To join that battle and the caution flag is going to fly as Robbie Moroso skates down off the racetrack onto the apron. Didn't hit anything. Gets it back up and underway. Your viewer questions go to 1-800-522-RACE today. 1-800-522-RACE on our unique commercial free telecast of Winston Cup Racing, and Pat Patterson has a viewer question to deal with. Whoa, trouble on the racetrack. Big spin as Robbie Moroso hits the fence. Second spin of the day, and he's in trouble. Is everybody going to get by? Unbelievable. Let's pray that that continues and everybody can snake through. That car is sitting dead center in the middle of the racetrack. Rob Moroso has crashed in turn one, bringing out another caution flag on the 191st lap everybody racing back to the line for position. Michael Walter oh, has uh, some smoke coming from his car also. Well, he locked the brakes down to keep from running over somebody. He was trying to, here's, we see what happened. Dick Trickle was high, came down into Rob Moroso, hit him and spin him around right in front of the leader. Well, we just heard John Curtin say a few minutes ago about how they were looking for Rob Moroso as a possible relief driver for Richard Petty. And if Rob is okay, the car doesn't look to be okay. Well, he might uh, might be able to go. You can see the man taking off. We've got a spin up in turn three as well. A second car has gone down. Wilson spun through the grass and was able to continue. But the number 21 car of Dale Jarrett is down on the bottom of turn number three and it will bring out still another caution this happening as they complete lap 275 it is the eighth caution of the day as dale jarrett who gave a remarkable performance in the grand national race yesterday has his problems with the wood brothers car this afternoon robbie moroso just went by with the fender knocked off so i think that probably had something to do with it. yeah there's robbie there's moroso's number 20 grinding it down in the wall and a hard Ooh. sock for number 21 Man, that was a lick. They got together coming off two after they got straightened off two. And once they got hit, it though, there was no stopping. You can see Robbie's car almost go airborne. Yeah, maybe I need that. Oh, we have a crash on the main straightaway. Rob Moroso in the wall. Rob Moroso hits the inside retaining wall here on the main straightaway. And Dusty Wallace is going to race Bill Elliott back to the start finish line, but he won't be able to get back in the lead lap. Rob Moroso's rookie stats are this, zero wins, zero top fives, one top 10, an average finish of 25.4, and he had 15 DNFs. You heard me correctly there, 15. And there is no way I am about to put all 15 of his DNFs in one video. That would make it way longer than it already is. So now that we've got the racing part in this video down, let's address the elephant in the room here. In September at North Wilkesboro Speedway, Another disappointing finish left Moroso searching for answers. He called me later that night. He said, he said, Barry, man, I'm I'm sitting here crying, crying in my beer. He said, come down and talk to me. I was at home and uh, they were down at a local restaurant. I went down there. It's about the only time I ever saw Rob down and out. And uh, I was a little worried about him. I said, Rob, come on. Come on, let's go back to your house and we'll finish talking. Last time I talked to him. At 11 p.m. that night in Mooresville, North Carolina, Moroso skidded around a corner and crashed into an oncoming car. Moroso and the driver of the other car, 27-year-old Tammy Williams, were killed in the wreck. Investigators determined that Moroso was driving over 75 miles per hour and his blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit. Yep, you heard that right. The idiot drove under the influence and killed a person. Tammy Williams was a nursing assistant, wife, and mother. Meanwhile, in the passenger seat, his girlfriend, Debbie Bryant, would also be injured, but she would survive her injuries. Now, prior to this tragedy, Rob Moroso was convicted of speeding on four different occasions between 1987 and 89. He had been involved in two prior highway accidents, which included a rollover. Now the judges could have revoked his license at least twice. This would have made him ineligible to compete in NASCAR events, but the charges were reduced. I do not feel sorry for Rob Moroso, not one 
bit. If I feel sorry for anyone, it's Tammy Williams and her family, and also Rob Moroso's father, Dick Moroso. Okay? That is the absolute worst thing for any parent to go through is burying their own child. So let this be a lesson to everybody not to drive under the influence and if you play stupid games you are going to win stupid prizes and in Rob Moroso's case his prize was ultimately death. Rob Moroso literally had the world in his hands, a young 20 year old kid dominating in the Bush series, then later moving up to the Winston Cup series with a team owned by his father nonetheless. He could have gone on to become a Winston Cup series legend, but he threw it all away by making one dumb decision. Never drink and drive folks. So that'll do it for another NASCAR bus series video, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter, catch you next time.